Hi everyone, my name is Eileen Hull and I am here today because I want to show you how to use this die that I designed for Sizzix. It's called the Wrap Journal. Um, it has a lot of options and I just thought we probably have a lot of art journalers out there, people who like to make planners, people who like to do bullet journals or mini albums. This die can do it all. So I just wanted to go through it, show you some samples, and show you how easy it is to use. Uh, all you need is a die cutting machine, some materials to cut, and the die. And you can make countless numbers of books. So uh, I'm going to go through all the different materials, and then we will get to it and make one. And then I'm going to show you some really, really beautiful, awesome samples from the Eileen Hall inspiration team. Also, while I have you, uh, I'd love for you to join our Eileen Hull uh, fan club on Facebook. We have such a great group. There are almost 5,000 members, and it's very considerate and generous and sharing and uh, inspirational. So I hope that you will come request to join, answer the two questions that we ask, and we will bring you into the group, and you can be part of the whole discussion and be inspired. Okay, I also do Facebook Lives twice a week. I do Tuesdays at 6 o'clock at night uh, Eastern Time, and then Thursdays at 4 o'clock Eastern also. I live in Virginia. <laughs> so um, I hope that you will join me for uh, some of them and uh, get on the chat and uh, ask questions if you have any or just join in the fun. We have, uh, like I said, a very nice community. So uh, I'm also on Instagram at Eileen Hull, and I recently got hacked, so I'm trying to build up my audience again. Any follows would be welcome. And I hope you will just, um, just follow along and uh, maybe give this a try at some point, okay? So I'm going to turn the camera down, and we will get into a demo of what we need to have, um, how to do it, and then some samples. So let's get to work on this journal. Um, let's go through the things that you're going to need to make one. Number one thing would be a bit, uh, well, a die cut machine. I love my Big Shot. Uh, this is what I use most of the time. Uh, there are other machines that will accept the steel rule dies. Those are the thick ones. So if you have one, you know, you might have to play with your cutting pads a little bit, but you probably can use other machines too. So this is one thing. The next thing is you will need extended cutting pads because this is a long die, okay? So you need to cut this entire thing. You can't do a shortcut and tape two together because there's a little spot in the middle that just doesn't quite meet and you'd have to cut it by hand. These you can get on sale at you know your local craft stores, so it is worth getting a set of these to have on hand with this die, okay? So those are called the extended cutting pads. Um, here is the die itself, and as you can see, this is a leather journal, which is really, really pretty. And you can make it out of that or mat board. That's what we're going to use today, and we're going to cover it with paper. So let's just take a look at the die, and then I'll show you how we're going to put it together. Now, unfortunately, there was a little black piece that was in here that I lost, but you can put anything in here in, to just have as a spacer. And the reason that you're doing that is when you roll this through, sometimes because this is a platform, and I'll tell you what you do with this in a second, the mat board might tend to stick down in there. So when you have like a little spacer, this is just a thick piece of foam, it will allow the material to release out of your die. You, you're able to just pull it out, but um, that's why that's there. So here are another couple things that work with this die. Uh, this here is a scalloped edge. Now you'll notice this is longer than the die, so what you have to do is you cut the die out first, and then you use the scalloped edge to trim it on another platform. We're not going to do that today, but just so you know, this is a mover and shaper, but it's too big to fit in here because it wouldn't cut it. So that you'll have to do a different way. This here is one called the This is now discontinued, but what this does is it will cut a little set of flowers into the flap 
of your journal. So if you want to find that somewhere, you probably can, but we're not going to do that today either. But just so you know, that's what this is for. It's called a mover and shaper element, and it's magnetic and it sticks in there, but you can remove it. So we're just going to ignore that today. <laughs> The other thing is, though, you can also use other dies with it. Uh, this is a die called the Passport Book, which works with this die in that you can use the page element from the Passport Book to work with your wrap journal die. So you can use these pages from this book to put inside here. You can also use these. And these are just little books from the Dollar Tree, from Joann's, and they will fit inside too. So if you don't want to make your own little uh, insert books, you can buy them. These are three for a dollar at Dollar Tree, and these, I can't remember how much they were, but they might have been from Michael's. But you can find them pretty much anywhere. This is five and an eighth, so if you can find a five inch book or smaller, that will fit just fine in here too, how you can um, make a book to fit in here. It's very easy. You're basically just trimming out a piece of paper, folding it over, and making a stack of them, and then um, put the, putting them inside these little signatures. Here's the other thing that you're going to need. Elastic. This is 1.5 elastic. This is probably the most versatile. I buy it on a roll because I go through a lot of it, but you can find it this anywhere, Hobby Lobby or, you know, your local sewing uh, sections in any store. And so I'll show you how we're going to string this up to allow us to slip our signatures in and out of the um, binding here. The other thing that you can do is, and we're not going to do this today, I, I would love to do everything, we just don't have time. But you can take your folders, your 3D folders or your regular embossing folders, and once you've die cut your journal out, you can emboss it. So this would take a couple passes through, but you could do it, and it's very, very pretty and very easy and simple. So. Um, that's a nice option for this die. All right, let's talk about our materials that we might need to cut from. These are two products from Sizzix, but you can use matte board if you happen to have matte board at home, or uh, you can buy it uh, if you have cut uh, off cuts. You can use chipboard. Um, this here is mixed media board. This comes in white and chipboard color, you know, I think you can see. And so what you might want to do is cover it with paper. That's what we're going to do today. Um, but you can work directly on the surface. That's why they call it mixed media board. It will accept your paints, inks, stencils, sprays, texture paste, whatever you want to load up and put on it. It's really thick. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. So this is going to hold up to pretty much anything you want to put on here. Okay, this is the actual matte board. This is mixed media board. The matte board is a tiny bit thicker. So here is another product that I like to use, and I obviously asked Thermoweb to make it for me because I need something strong. We're talking about, this is a heavy-duty die. We're talking about putting heavy-duty materials through it and on the matte board. You can put metal on here, you can put fabric, you know, cork, whatever you want to throw on it. If you do that, you're going to need a strong adhesive, and that's what this is. So we're going to use this today, and we're going to cover our matte board with paper, and then we're going to die cut it. So um, those are just a few of the things that you might need uh, when you are working on this die, okay? So let's go ahead and get started on making our album. All right, so the first thing that we need is some paper. So here is a piece of paper, and here's my plan. Now, one thing I want to mention. If you look at it, this die is long. It's 12 and 3 quarters inch uh, long. The paper is only 12 inches long, but what I'm going to do is... I am going to cut out to the end here, and then I'm just going to trim it off. 
You know, it doesn't have to be this long. Another thing that I should point out is, say you just want to make an album and you, you don't want to have the wrap feature on it and you just want to have a little book with this nice thick binding, which by the way, the binding can go anywhere from one of these little segments here, which is 3 eighths inch. It can go all the way up to, I can't remember how thick this is. Uh, one and a half inches wide. So you can vary the width of it just by how you fold it up. But say you don't want to have the wrap part, that's this piece here. You can just chop it off and make it into a book. So it really does have a lot of options uh, for use. So I hope you will explore this a little bit. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my um, cutter puller and I'm just going to trim my paper in half. Now this is a little bit longer than 12 inches because we've got this strip here, but I'm going to use that. So I'm just going to cut this down the middle at 6 inches and I'm going to have this piece on one side and this piece on the back. So that way we're going to have color on, on a pattern on both sides. So I am going to get a piece of mat board out and I'm going to get my easy cut adhesive and I'm going to cover both sides with this adhesive. And like I said, it's nice and strong, so I know it's going to hold my paper on. And the way I do it is just kind of place it down, smooth it out. I'm going to flip that over. I usually start at one end and Let, let it let it settle. And it doesn't matter if it's a little bit crooked or whatever, that's fine. Now I, I am going to go ahead and cover, let's see, we don't want the adhesive sticking on the mat board. So what I usually do is I want to cover it all the way to the end. I'm going to add my adhesive on here and then I'm going to keep that paper so that if I need to cover it, it doesn't stick to my die, because that's a pain. If there are little bubbles, don't worry about it. Hoping you guys can see this okay. I usually go portrait, but I'm doing landscape today. Okay, so now our mat board is covered front and back with adhesive, and we're just going to peel that off. Alright, and we're going to add our paper. So keep this up because this is very sticky and once it goes down, it's down. Alright, that's a little bit off but I'm not going to worry about it. And then come over here. You want the pretty side uh, facing up because you want to see it when you uh, cut out your journal. That's what you want to see. So we could do either side, but I think I want to have my pattern on the front because if there is any little mistake you won't notice. And then this piece here I'm going to peel up. I probably should have done that right off the bat so I don't bend this, but now this is sticky. I'm just going to cover that with my paper, release paper. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing over here. You might have to burnish it a little bit. All right, now we're ready to cut. And I like to keep all this release paper because I use that as disposable palettes for my inking. So use it all. All right, so here's my die. Now one thing that I want to think about is which end is the front. This is the front of the die. All right, so when we, when we go to roll this through, I want the pretty side, this side right here, I want that facing down on my front cover, okay? And then this is going to be the back and this will be the flap. 
So if I want, I can just trim off a little bit of this flap. If I, we'll see how it looks, but you just want to make sure that you cover the cutting lines on both ends. Okay, this is tight because the the mat board is 13 inches and the die is 12 and three quarters. So you want to make sure that you're getting it all so it's going to cut. All right, and then I just kind of line that up with the die. And then you're going to take your machine and your two cutting pads. Let's get them on first. One on the top, one on the bottom. I'm just telling you as though you've never done this before. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, maybe you've done it a different way. However you want to do it is fine, but I'm just showing you how I do it. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to roll this through. Now this is two layers of paper, two layers of glue, and mat board, and it's going through just fine. Don't have to roll it through more than one time. Once is plenty. All right, so let's see what we have. Okay. All right, good. We have our book. And it's all cut in one pass. Look at this. Now, something we can do here is we can take a little bit of glitter and we can just sprinkle that on the end. We can trim it. We can do pretty much whatever we want. I think I'm going to get my glitter and I think let's do that because that's kind of a fun effect. Same over here. We can add a little bit of glitter here. So let me go and find it. Okay, I found my glitter. I think I have enough. <laughs> I don't know when I got this. I've had this a long time and I probably will have it for many years to come. And some people don't like glitter. I, I think it's fun. Gotta live, right? All right, so I like to use coffee filters. I'm just gonna sprinkle this in here. Why not? Silver is pretty. Alright, and then just kind of shake it off. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Oop. I think that's going to be cool. So you can make, fix anything, right? But, I mean, you're totally okay if you want to patch in a little piece here or do it however you like. You can use wrapping paper or larger sheets of paper. That would be the easy thing, really. But why do it the easy way? <laughs> all right. And let's just make sure we got it all. And like I said, you could have just chopped this off and not even have to think about it, but I kind of like the little glitter touch. All right, so now we've got our book cut. Okay, so I cleaned up the glitter. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me, but now we have a nice little book. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is when you are die cutting, let's go back and look at our die. Make sure that you pick out all of these little pieces out of the holes in your die because if you don't, they will get stuck in there and they'll get smushed down there and they're really hard to get out. So just make sure to pick them out every one or two times that you cut the die. Okay. So we're ready to put our book together, really. All right, and so now we have to figure out, do I want to have a rounded edge to it? Do I want to have a square edge? Um, I think for this, I want to have a rounded edge, okay? So I, you can also call that a rolled edge. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I am going to gently fold on each of these score lines here. Now, if you wanted a straight edge, you wouldn't do these middle ones. You would just keep that, the two outer score lines, this one and that one, and just fold them there. But we're going to 
gently bend each one of them. Usually what I do is I take it and I lay it on the edge of a table and I will kind of fold it over like that over uh, the table edge. It just helps it. The thing about it is you want to have even pressure um, because if you lift up, if you say you just pushed on this side, you might get the paper separating because mat board is basically layer on layer on layer of paper and it will separate if you don't work it right. All right, so here we go. We've got our little book. Check that out. Isn't that adorable? So now all we have to do is add our elastic and insert our little books and we're good to go. So, like I said before, if you wanted to just have a book and you didn't want the flap, you would just chop it off right here and you would have a nice little book that would close, you know, just fine. But I do like the extra addition of the glitter and the flap because that makes it a little special and it keeps whatever is inside uh, safe. And so there are lots of different ways that you can close this. I usually do it just with elastic. And what I'll do is I'll punch a hole in here and make a loop of elastic and just wrap it around. That's very simple, easy. So that's one way to do it. Um, if you go to my Facebook page, you will see on the side, Eileen Hold Designs, just look down in the video tab and you will see tons of ways to work with this die and other dies. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to string my book. Now, like I said, this is 1.5 millimeters cord, uh, elastic cording. It's round. You could also use ribbon. You could use twine. You could use hemp, uh, whatever you have on hand. It's not going to have the stretchiness, though, and I do like to have the stretchy uh, factor here. So what I'm going to do is just cut a piece of elastic, and I know it's going to be too long because I always cut it too long, but I'm going to show you how to thread this up, okay? Let's do all of our, or all four holes. You could just do the outer ones if you wanted to just put a couple books in, or you could do all of them. Actually, I'm going to show you how to make six strings in here. So what you're going to do is I start, I hold my cover. This is my cover right here. You can tell because it's the larger flap. Hold that in my left hand. And then I'm going to string this through from the middle of the book. Now, probably black would look better with this, but I don't have black today. All right. So the thing to remember when you're making your insert books is that you want to have all of your strings on the inside going vertically and you want the ones on the outside of the book going horizontally. So we're just going to take this and come over here and we're just going to match up the holes. Okay. And you'll see that we're going to, like I said, we're going to have six total. So just keep stringing and you want to have pretty good tension but not too loose. And when you need to, um, you know, flip the book over. And you can tighten these back up after we get done. All right, now what? Now we're going to go back the other way. So that means we're going to have to do go through the same hole twice. No big deal. It goes through easily. Now, if you have a 2 millimeter elastic, it may not. So that's another reason why I like this 1.5. But again, use whatever you have on hand or whatever you like. So you'll see, this one has one strand, this has two. We're going to do this one. It's going to have two. And then the two outer ones will just have one string of elastic. And the good thing about video, if you forget how to do this, just go back and watch it again. Very easy, really. Um, the other way that you can do it is you can just cut four strands of elastic and tie each one separately. And that's really easy. All right, but all I'm doing is I'm basically filling in all of the gaps here on the journal spine. Okay, so now I told you I cut it too long. Um, I'm going to kind of give this a little test. And I think that one's tight, or that one's too too loose. See, if you make them too tight, they're going to kind of bunch up on your signatures, and you may not want that. So, but give them some play. 
All right, I think that's good. And then I cut off a little more than I need because I don't want to have to worry about not having enough to tie. And then you're just going to do a square knot here on the inside. That's right over left, left over right. I'm not sure I did that, but this should be fine. <laughs> all right. And then I usually leave this for a while until I get all my, my um, threads or my books inside, and then uh, I will trim this off. I like to leave a little extra in case I did it too tight, then I can still go out from there. So you can see we have six different elastics here. So if I wanted to... I could take my little book, and this is one that I bought at the Dollar Tree. It's very easy to cover this with paper. Just take some of your adhesive, you know, put it on there, and then um, trim around it with scissors or your craft knife and make this match the book, because this will not. But And then you're going to go to the middle of the book, and you're just going to slip it under the elastic, and then you've got these nice little books and you can see this will fit in there um, well, let's just try this one this one might, might actually fit better than this yeah that's a little cute little fox all right so these are a little taller so it depends on where I do like the ones that have the uh, lines on them but you know but say you want to make an art journal, you can cut pages out of watercolor paper and slip them under, you know? So there's many ways to use this. So I'm only going to use three of my strings right now, but I can add little pockets later. I can add whatever I like. If I want to go over two, I can do that. Just make both of them and then just kind of wiggle them around so that they fit inside the book and make sure they're even. And basically you have yourself an adorable little wrap journal. Isn't that cute? So now let's say we want to do a um, closure. What I would do is I would punch a hole. I wouldn't do it in the joint because it's weak there. I would do it down the middle right here. Punch a hole here or here and then you're going to make a loop out of your leftover elastic, you know, what you think it would take to wrap around, and you could decorate that with beads or whatever, and just tie a little knot here, and then you'd have a loop of elastic, which you would just thread through, pull it through, and then this will wrap around the journal like that. Okay, or you could do it over on this side, however you want. I think you can see there are a lot of options for this little die. Now let me show you uh, some others that you are going to go crazy over. If we could ever get rid of the glitter. <laughs> Maybe that was not the best idea. All right, let me find some amazing samples to show you. So I lowered the camera so it's easier for you to see. And I'm just going to go through these quickly because I have a lot of samples to show you. But here's one made by a team member of mine. And I'm not going to say all the names because I'm afraid I'll say it wrong. <laughs> and I don't remember everybody because this came out about three years ago. But look at this. I know that I sent them each a piece of this that I got it at Hobby Lobby. It's kind of a faux leather. And look at this beautiful journal. Isn't that just amazing? She stitched her signatures closed on the machine and these are tea dyed papers and she distressed and used a magnet for closure. So you can see this is going to match up with that and it just has that real nice sound when it closes. So that's one. This one is made out of a flexible fabric like a foam adhesive. So it's fabric stuck to the front and the back and then just brightly colored. This was Hobby Lobby fabric. I really like that. I made this one. And then I just tied. This has that uh, scalloped border on it, you can see. And then I just tied some kind of faux leather cord around it and I put some charms on it and it just made me happy. So that is just another cute little journal. 
All right, uh, here is, I love this one. This is so cool, it's like a mitten clip closure. All right, wait a minute. So you just clip it on like that. But look at how she did time in a bottle and a cute little junk journal. All kinds of fun signatures and and there's the song, If I Could Save Time in a Bottle. And you just clip that. I think that is so clever, that closure. All right, here's another one. This is one of the team members that likes to do a lot of mixed media also. So she decorated her cover and book so that they match and also used elastic to tie them in. And she just used a big uh, her hair band for a closure. So what you would do is just kind of slide that in here and that will keep it closed. So you don't need anything fancy. Now this is how you would close it if you wanted it um, square. We did the rolled binding. This is the squared binding. So you can see how nice and thick that is. All right, here is another one. This was done with a dollar store doily. And I think I lost a flower here, but um, she took a doily, put some silver paste on it, and just used pretty little flowers. And actually, somebody was left-handed, and they said they do it the other way. They put their books like this. I don't know why. I guess that's easier for left-handed people. Anyway, I'm right-handed, so I don't know. But she made these cool little charms. All right, I'm taking too long. Here's another one piece of art on the front. Paint your truth. It's cool. All right, this is an art journal. Look at these stamped fun. Okay, and another easy closure. Now this one I made out of a placemat that I got at Home Goods. And just same thing that we did. And then these are from Daiso, little books, and I just added them in. So this is a nice thick one. I didn't even add a closure to it. I can open it and close it whenever I want. This one is covered with felt. And here are those little flowers that we talked about, the mover and shaper, and some pom-pom. And this is a hand-dyed um, felt wool felt. So this one is more on the order of a planner. I think it's so cute. And here's that fabric on the inside. And then she added the pom-pom. Pom Her style is more of a boho. So like I said, you can take any style that you like to do and make it out of that material. Now here are some leather ones. I made these. I love leather. This is embossed with a 3D folder with leather. Is that not gorgeous? And then I lined it with fabric inside with like a tweed fabric. And then actually, I like that pattern because that's the same one. And then you can make these little, you know, books that go inside, little folders. And that's a Dollar Tree one that's covered with the fabric. It's very simple, but I think so, so pretty. Here's another leather one that I did kind of as a Christmas junk journal. Wrong way. <laughs> so same idea, but all kinds of little goodies and photos and flip outs and, you know, little books. It's fun. That'd be a fun Christmas planner. You know, when you have all your events and dinners and parties. Here's another leather one, same thing. This I colored with some inks and added uh, a rock charm, and I wire wrapped that. Um, this one is actually patent leather, except the patent leather is on the inside, and this is the other side of it. And so they inked that, and um, I love this one. I love them all. So, another fun one. What else? Here's another. This one is gorgeous. This is really, really thick felt. 
my friend Ann made, and she loves red, so you can take any color and go to town with it. So these are some fun little books, and then this just wraps around, and you tuck it under. You have this cute little red heart. Look at how thick that is. That's felt on top of map board. Here's another one. Check this out. This one has a junk journal with fabric. Okay, these are all some my, some of my other dies. Stitchlets I had, and this is another fun one. But look at this. She said it took her a week to make this, and I believe it. Is this not gorgeous? Anyway, wrong way. <laughs> and then here's another closure. Just get a hitch fastener and a little bit of fabric, loop it around. So lots of ideas here. This one I think was covered with a napkin. I'm not sure. And two pieces of napkin, maybe laminated? I don't know, but I love it. Something for everybody. What else? Here we go. This is another... Oh, this is the magnet one. So this is another fun one. Another little junk journal. So you should have... And look at this with the flowers in there. And a little tag. I think it's stuck in there. Anyway, these are so much fun to look at and just remember how much fun we had when these came out. And we still are having fun with them. This one was made up of all com uh, computer parts. So <laughs> little circuit boards and, and cool nerdy things. <laughs> and this is like, I guess, computer paper, but it's got holes in it. It's really cool. And Ledger, do more of what makes you happy. Look at that. And she tucked it right inside there. I love this so smart. Let's see what else. Oh, this is a fun one too. All right, you can also make a little shadow box out of it. This is the trinket box die, and so this is another one that works inside and in combination with, and here are the little passport book pages. So uh, you can, like I said, combine dies and just all closed up. What else? Here's one made with, um, this was a class I taught, and I made this out of fabric with foam, so it's flexible. And then it was a card class, so we used some of the dies to make cards, and then it's like a little card keeper. So that was a fun one. You could put someone's picture inside, what else? This one is also patent leather. This was from my friend Tracy Evans. And she did her thing on it and added her cheesecloth and her mixed media. She stitched it. She went to town, as Tracy does. <laughs> you all know Tracy. What else do we have? Here's a cute little junk journal from Pam. And... She, it's great if you want to use your um, paper collections because if you get a paper pad, you know, they all work together. So I think I have this one. It's really cute. So these are the little notebooks and then interspersed. She made these little covers out of them and mixed, did mixed media on the inside. That one's so cute. And here's one that I was experimenting with embossing powder and inks and I made like a little pocket envelope book out of it so you can put anything inside it doesn't have to be signatures and I don't know what this one is I did that one but I don't remember what I did with it. oh I think this is cards too yeah these are some more little cards and just kind of fun to you know a little junk journal it's adorable I think that's good for now. Oh, here's one more thing. Um, this I actually made into a box, and I put cards in it. 
And the way I did it was I cut extras of these spines and then used them here to make a, an edge on either side. And then you've got a nice little card box. And you can put, so here's a three by five card, so you can put them in here, but you could do taller too. Anyway, that is just some inspiration for you to make your little wrap journal. And I hope you had fun. And um, I hope you give it a try. All right?